Anyway, welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. <laughs> it's uh, the 26th of October, uh, 2011. And um, we are a webcast that meets every Wednesday. We broadcast over the EdTech Talk channel of the World Bridges Network. And um, looks like a couple of people still joining us. But we have with us Cynthia, Cynthia Sh Schneider, is that right? Did I say that correctly? Schneider. Mm -hmm. Schneider, yeah. And Chris Sloan and Monica Hardy. Um, and others are scheduled to join us, so they'll join us when they can. Um, welcome, everybody. So I stopped the conversation so we could get it in this official part of the conversation. <laughs> so, Cynthia, why don't you talk again? You were talking about having kids of different different grade levels. Huh? <laughs> Go but ahead, yeah, Cynthia. going back to your question, it is um, the required sophomore English class. And um, luckily, the curriculum is flexible, so I can make my own choices about what books we're using to meet the, the grade level expectations and the standards that we have to meet. And uh, I just have a huge variety of skills because we are a small school. We don't track our students into like honors and remedial. Um, the students who need additional, um, so I'm struggling with that. And it's mostly the struggle is with students who are sophomores who feel like they can't learn and they feel like they don't have any choices in what they're able to do, and so they're just fighting the entire time. And I have to say, I, I don't know if it's a curse that my district has given me so much time to listen to kids, you know, to, to really listen to them. Um, I have to say it's the it's the prescribed curriculum. If they're feeling like they need to be spoon fed, I really I believe that it's because it's it's this thing that it's not coming from the inside of them. Um, which I totally get that we're you know we can't just change that. We've got all these guidelines and everything. Um, that's actually what we're working on, but. I, that's what I think it is. I don't think you can do any more with a, a group of whatever size if you're, you're dictating what they're going to be learning. Even if you give them some space to choose different things, if you've still given them this, these parameters to do it within, I don't think we're going to see their brilliance, you know, or their ownership of it. Well, that uh, is kind of an ominous statement for someone who's just in the month of uh, October as a teacher. So um, I think, you know, there's latitude in the traditional system, I think. Um, so I shared with Cynthia, did you get my thing about just the, uh, the kind of open-ended 1984 stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I appreciated that. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so... Basically, that we're both um, reading 1984 now, which I think, um, you know, I mean, that's part of, it's kind of one of the usual suspects of a lot of classes. But I think, you know, within that, um, there's, there's a lot of uh, interest that my students have in that because, um, you know, they're familiar with, like, V for Vendetta and the Watchmen graphic novel and, and things like that. And so... Um, there's a lot of latitude with dystopian, utopian literature that they still tap into and care about. So I think, um, you know, those kinds of things that there's, there's options within the curriculum, yeah, they're kind of, um, they have to be in school for a certain time and they have to be in certain rooms, but, um, you know, there's latitude within that playing field. Gail Desler, are you there? We see a still image. You can hear us. We yeah. can hear you. That's Do you hear me, Paul? good enough. Yep. Can you hear us? Okay. Okay. So probably, probably like perfectly. So probably I'll just be visible um, as Teddy should pass. No. That's right. Cynthia, I wanted you to go back again because you said it before we officially started, but not after. Can you describe that class again? How many kids are in it and what levels are they? Are they different ages or are they just different, no. if you don't mind? <laughs> yeah, 
it's um well see i'm i've been teaching for a while but this is the first time that i've taught um this age group in this class so that's you know my inexperience is coming up against um some challenges <laughs> I, I certainly don't want to monopolize the conversation. Um, you know, it's. I, it, I think what I'm really feeling is just that we are going to a better place in education. I'm an optimistic person, and I feel like we're going there. But right now, I'm stuck in an older mm -hmm. school sort of a system, and I. I know that the kids are feeling powerless and I know that they're feeling trapped and I'm trying to work within that system to say, hey, you know, I think, like Chris was saying, there's so many ways you can connect to 1984. This is a great piece of literature. You guys can rise to this challenge and you can read this. But some of the kids are feeling so down on their own abilities and they're just feeling so down on the whole school system that they are fighting every step of the way and not allowing me to, you know, help them to learn. So what were some of your suggestions, Chris? Um, well, like there's for, think of Paul's student today who he wrote about, uh, the kid who's really into rap. Um, you know, there's just like, there's different genres you can approach that same dystopian uh, theme with. So, you know, there's, uh, I, there's a, I sent her a, a link to um, an assignment that I gave my kids where you know, there's, I don't know how many songs that they could choose from or paintings that they could look at or photographs um, and just kind of try to come across that same theme that, um, you know, you're talking about schools as these, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but these oppressive systems that... Uh, <laughs> seem to be uh, stifling creativity and uh, you know it strikes me that a lot of dystopian literature is that same thing so um, all those things I, th I need to read this and so um, if we can connect them through different media for example through that same kind of theme uh, they, they do seem to like it And maybe I'll put a link in the Hangout as to what I'm, the th assignment I'm referring to. I guess I did want to ask about their different levels because, I mean, I certainly have way different levels in my own classroom right now. <laughs> you know, so one kid who's really wonderful at music hates reading and another kid who struggles with writing loves to do something else. So... I'm just wondering, I think we're hitting it at a similar suggestion there. I'm wondering if you can find what their talents are in some way. And, you know, it's why should we give you advice? I don't, I don't think we should, but <laughs> that's some of the – do you have any response to that, Cynthia? Like, what No, are that their... makes perfect sense. I mean, we all build on our strengths, and um... – you know, I think the, the discouraging thing to me is that I feel like the kids are labeling themselves as being unable to read, unable to learn. And, you know, I'm trying to say, hey, you know, I know you guys can take this book and I know that you can run with this and find connections in your school and in your community and in current events. I know you can this and find connections in your school and in your community and in current events. I know you can do this. Um, and I, I just have some students that have repeatedly been failures in the school system and they just, you know, they label themselves too. So yeah, I agree. You have to build on the strengths. Uh, want to welcome Fred. You're here with us, right, Fred? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yep, sounds good. Good. Welcome. All right. And Valerie, welcome. Valerie, we can't see you, but we can. We Hello, hear you? how are you? Good. We can hear you. Good. 
My students wrote some I'm always, comments I'm to your students' I'm going poetry. late. I'm sorry. It's okay. Welcome. We were all late tonight. Thank you very much. I am. I'm in awe. <laughs> okay. I like and your thank collage, you, Valerie. Thank you, Chris and Paul, everybody, for letting us do that. I mean, I'm. It's wonderful. Right. Huh? Yeah, so, so let's jump to what 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 happened. <laughs> Tell us your assignment. You, Paul, would you say? Tell us your assignment and um, and have your kids seen some of the comments yet, or what's what's been going on? So Valerie's students just posted some some poetry um, on you. Our, so we started doing poetry last week. <laughs> Go on. Okay, my turn. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We started writing poetry last week and they've been posting it. They've been posting it on their personal blogs and their assignment for the last couple of days has been to put that on youth voices. Mm -hmm. So I gave them several templates to choose from and they were. So some of the kids did see some of the comments. I've been screaming and hollering in class every time I see a new comment on their stuff. <laughs> so they're really excited, and tomorrow they're going to start coming. Yes? No? There's something going on between us and Valerie. Well, while <laughs> yes, we're waiting, I have to say, oh, yeah, Chris. Just a quick response to what Valerie was saying. Like, I just tossed it out. I saw your email, Paul, right before I met with uh, my photographers, actually, who were on a separate assignment. And I just said, if anyone has some moments, would you mind just making some comments on these these poets from Louisiana? And, um, you know, they the ones who took to it, a couple of them said, oh, I will. You know, they did more than I asked them to do. And so it's I see that time and again that, you know, if they start to make that connection, um, they do more than the minimum requirement. And I, all I said was, can anyone make some comments on these poems? Can you read them and make some comments? And, you know, some of them did quite a few. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. And my kids did, too. They found it easy. And, and they also said, can we do this, too? Can we write some poetry? <laughs> You know, I said, nah, you're not allowed to do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. Fred, why don't you jump in, tell us where you've been, and uh, what's your concerns here tonight? What's up? Well, I, uh, I'm in a, a very different situation from everybody else in that I don't have a regular classroom, so I don't have uh, that kind of regular assignment. I have these couple of special projects going on, mm -hmm. um, primarily with Renaissance High School, which is the Continuation High School. And the reason I'm working there is that it, the Continuation um, structure gives some flexibility for doing interesting and creative work, whereas basically every other school in our area is almost completely locked down and prevented from doing anything interesting or creative. It's just such a struggle to get through. We, I, we just met for, with the group from our summer institute and one of the teachers described her current assignment where her entire day is scripted. And it's not like, I mean, you know, some people would say, uh, or a, a lot of people reacted to that saying, well, eh, you know, at least you have a script to follow. You don't have to worry about writing lesson plans. No, that's not the way they do it. They give you this script that is a framework, but you still have to, and she spent, she said, she, she spent a week of, of sleeping only three or four hours a night because she had to write these incredibly detailed, specific lesson plans, just regurgitating their framework back at them. And, I, you know, I, I had one experience when I was doing a long-term sub where I had to do a scripted lesson and I was physically ill. I, I could not handle it. It's 
So, you know, that's what we're up against. Um, right this week, I'm doing a, a week-long sub at a kindergarten class, and the kids had their uh, one hour a week in the computer lab today where they spent the entire time doing Starfall, which is this online uh, phonics, um, you know, just flashcards on the computer. And that's the, the situation throughout most of this part of California, and I think in a lot of California and, and other places that are under Nickleby sanctions, the, the little tiny time you have at a computer is spent doing flashcards on the computer, and there's no space or opportunity for doing anything creative or interesting with the computers. It's really depressing. <laughs> wow. Can, can you say more about what's happening at Renaissance, that's enabling yeah. The um, uh, the the best thing going now is this project with um, teaching kids string games as part of the Maker Fair, and then having them go and um, teach string games at a community event at the local museum. And just last week, I had a one of those. Uh, uh, serendipitous moments where the student that I was working with said, oh, the, the bus just got back from the volleyball game. Can we go find out what happened? And so we went out to check in with the, with the volleyball team, and a half a dozen kids were fascinated when I brought out the string. And um, one of them had, had played uh, Cat's Cradle as a kid, and but couldn't quite remember it, so I reminded her, and she was just so jazzed to be playing string games. Um, so I think there's a real potential for something to spark uh, from that. And I also had a great connection with the shop. They have a wood shop there, and the shop teacher is interested in building a shed for the garden program. Um, my garden project that I was doing last year was on hold because the teacher left and there's a new teacher who's just come in who's never taught before and so I'm giving her a couple of weeks to get her feet on the ground but she is definitely interested so between the the wood shop and the garden I think we'll have some interesting maker projects going there soon I still haven't been able to get youth voices unblocked I'm still working on that um, but that's what I think will be the first sort of concrete representation of this work is getting some of our reports in progress posted to Youth Voices for feedback. So what are you doing to get Youth Voices unblocked? And who can we, you know, can we all go to his office and yell at him or something? Yeah. <laughs> well, at this point, what I started with was having the actual classroom teachers that I'm working with most closely request the unblocking to the powers that be and since we haven't gotten any response they haven't even said no they've just not responded yeah. so I think my next like step is going to be to go to the principal because um, the, the the principal I'm sure can get it done I just wanted to go you know follow protocol go through the teachers first and uh, so now we're at the point where I, I think we can go to the principal and I'm sure she'll be able to get it done. So thank you for the offer, but I think it will happen. It's just one of those bureaucratic molasses things. Yeah, it takes extra effort. Cynthia, what's going on with your blocking situation? Um, it's continuing to be a problem because we have two tech guys for three schools in our district. Um, it's ridiculous. And um, so I think I'm going to get to the point where um, I'm going to start having time where we're looking at youth voices as a group. Um, but then I think I can individually unblock the students' computers. Um, it's just going to, it's just going to be uh, difficult. But uh, I'm going to start working on that because I have the principal's approval, but the tech guys are so, um, it's not even on their radar screen because they are so busy with everything else. Mm -hmm. 
so when you do it individually you you like put your login in or something is that what you have to do i just have to i mean i can override the blocking but then i have to do that for every student's computer and it may continue to come up so yeah it's just going to be a, a clunky way to do it and um you know it's just it's really a tough situation the students are feeling that um yeah just that whole uh censorship of the internet at our at our school it's really it's not a good situation you know when you describe the first problem of the different levels and the kids own perception of themselves and the resistance and then you add in this problem <laughs> it's i can see you know i can see how hard it is when you have both of those things going on because they don't want you to open it yep. up <laughs> you know it's like they're happy in some ways to to not be able to do the work sometimes i think but yeah. gail welcome did you want to say something i don't know why but you came on <laughs> oh i was unmuted again sorry okay. <laughs> but i think i've got the dog situation somewhat under control now cool jump in gail what's going on with you um well I see Jim uh, Ferris didn't join. So on my um, you know list, I, I actually have um, tomorrow and Friday off, but well, furlough days. But <laughs> on uh, next week, I will work on getting our so, teachers wait, on board. And those are furlough days, meaning you're not being paid for them. That is correct. We wow. get nine of them. This year. Anybody else want to bring up another problem? <laughs> Go ahead, Gail. It's, it's kind of amazing. Go ahead, Gail. You have two days off. Oh. You, that's where you were. Yeah, and but, yeah, um, working with um, Fred's uh, colleague down south, Natalie Bernasconi, we were working on a digital citizenship project. We were getting going for a program that we're in. But anyhow, I um, besides an elementary teacher or two, you know, I have the awesome high school teacher who. Um, he definitely, um, Bob Levine, definitely, definitely wants to connect with you guys. So uh, I think he just needs me to come over and get it started, though, to jumpstart it. All right. So Valerie's students down in New Orleans or near New Orleans just put up a bunch of poems. And it's a really easy thing for somebody to start that way. They could jump in and respond to a poem. Um, so it's a good time. Okay. I, that's top of my priority list for next and week. Send me his recent email, and I'll encourage him as well. Yeah, yeah, I will do that. I, I wanted to throw out in relation to that the question about different levels and how you mm -hmm. deal with different levels in the classroom. One of my very favorite books of all time, Wingman, by Daniel Pinkwater. Mm -hmm. It's it's a uh, uh, partially based on a true story. I, I had a, an online chat with him, an email exchange with him about it, and he said, yeah, it, it, he, he actually had a friend who went through some of the experiences in the book. A lot of it is obviously fiction, but um, it, 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 the, the, uh, the thing that made me think of it is the um, Chinese-American boy who the story is about who, who is a comic book fanatic um, and dreams about there being a, a Chinese superhero in a comic book who he eventually does meet. That's who Wingman is. And, but in the story, his horrible teacher who was constantly putting him down um, he gets sick and takes a long, a long absence, and the long-term sub recognizes that this kid, who is such a comic book addict, is the probably the best reader in the whole class. And so she tells him to bring his comic book collection into the class, put it in the back of the room, and while everybody else is having reading instruction, he can go in the back and read comics, and anybody who gets there reading up to his level can join him with the comic books. And I, it just is one of those um, moments of a really inspired 
uh, uh, seizing a moment by a teacher that uh, I, I'm, I, I just thought of in relation to that challenge in a classroom. Can I, let me um, just describe something that happened. I I think part of the issue is reading one book with the whole class. And mm. Monica suggested earlier mm. that that might be an issue in a bigger way with one topic and, and it may be. And I do find I, what were you thinking, Jim? Not even just one book in one class, yeah. but um, you guys have already touched on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and say it, one medium, you know, that what is you know is writing just writing or is it also video or is it you know what are what are we really after are we after that they can communicate um and maybe communication has changed quite a bit you know just in the last three years or so that um writing is so many different things that we're not used to so just like you like you're saying fred just being open to um different means of communication as well um as opposed to even just one book. So, yeah, and I don't know where this story is going to fit, but one of the receipts I was, we're trying to read Black Boy um, with them. Um, a kid said to me, I'm not going to, what's this for? And I said, well, you know, you're going to read it. And he said, he said, no, I'm going to lose the book and then I'll owe you money. I'm not taking this. So he he was like, <laughs> That was his response to reading a book. So I have him, and then I have the young woman who came back the next day and said, I'm on chapter three. What What are we going to do with this? Right? So I have the real range. Um, I tried to do some reading in what I call my circle, right? I, I, I um, So that some of them would read some of the book. Um, I would read some of it to them. It was falling apart too much. So what I did was I created a, a voice thread. I took the first chapter and I identified I, eight sections of, of the book, found a photograph for each of the eight sections. And then what they're doing is they're going into the voice thread. And I imagine that they might be doing dramatic presentations or they might be just talking about that section of the book. but. All they want to do is just read the book. So they're reading the book. They're listening to each other read the book. So as so, I, the reason to tell the story is that what I found was whole group was not working. And so I needed them to get to the computer to be alone, that I could sit next to them. And they're fine with, you know, reading the book aloud and then hearing each other later. But somehow doing it all together at the same time didn't make a lot of sense. And you can see that, by the way, if you go under missions on Youth Voices and then you, you find Black Boy, you can see the voice thread that's very, very slowly growing. And so each section has uh, like four or five readers on that section. So I don't know. I don't, I, not a solution, but I, I guess I want to say I have the same problem with reading the same book. And I'm I'm at the point where I may be collecting the books back and then trading them for a whole like there's a whole bookshelf of other books they could choose from. So but I do want them reading. <laughs> Don't want to give up on that. I want them reading mm -hmm. literature. Any responses or thoughts to that story? Well, it makes me think of the uh, the NWP book groups where there's a there's a book assigned and everybody's reading the same book in order to be able to discuss it. And so from that point of view, as a professional community, as a, as a community of scholars, a classroom needs to have some common material as the basis for a discussion. It's, it's when the context is, you know, the man telling you this is what you got to do now, rather than the community of scholars agreeing that, yeah, this is what's going to be our focus for the next couple of weeks. You know, it's just, it's a, it's a matter of the context. 
that it comes out of. Mm -hmm. It's it's not the commonality that's that's inherently a problem. You know, I'm thinking of um, Kelly Gallagher's read aside. You know, and he talks about the flow, and, and I think maybe I think that that's important for kids to recognize in their own reading when they do fall into the flow, which you know obviously isn't going to happen with every book, but th that they understand uh, where that takes them as readers too. But what if you have an 18-year-old who's never had that? Honestly, I think more than half of my kids, that's their experience. They've never had a flow with a book. <laughs> that, you know... Right. Yeah, I know, and it, you know, in a way, that just seems like that should be our. I think as teachers, you know, like as as um, you know, English language arts teachers, that just should be a goal, and you know, something that we're all working toward. I think finding that one book that the kid can't put down. I mean, obviously, it should have started in elementary school, but. Mm -hmm. So that would suggest going with one book for the whole class. It's not not what to do with that group of kids. <laughs> well, I'm going to guess. You know, I don't know. I I used to just um, sometimes read, start reading a book, whole class, and then just leave it on a table, and you know, whoever got it first got to check it out and take it. <laughs> and if I had multiple copies, you know, then. Sometimes it was just that, you know, starting something to kind of get the spark going. Mm -hmm. Monica, did you have a question or did you want to introduce somebody behind there? Or... It, it got answered. I didn't hear okay. part of what you guys were saying, but I kind of put the pieces together there as you went mm -hmm. on. So mm -hmm. I've got some people in the room if you want to meet them. Yeah, let's do it. That'd be great. Okay, first I'll have Linda. Linda's got to go. So, um, Linda, well, I'll just let her introduce herself. Hi, Linda. Sit here. Hi, it's a um, pleasure to uh, have an opportunity to listen in and um, uh, be part of this for a little bit this evening. Um, I'm uh, really enjoying. Um, Linda, they want to go. Come on, Linda. They want to <laughs> I didn't Kelsey. do it. Oh, <laughs> Linda, you gotta, you gotta tell us, who are you? What do you do? <laughs> How do you be? <laughs> well, uh, back in August, Monica asked me to stop by the house here, and um, they're raising two grandkids, and they're in high school, and you know they want to be here, and these other kids, they want to be here. Um, tell them what you kids, just did tonight. Which time? You, just now. Here um, was interested in learning to cook, and so he made a magnificent mac craft macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Following the directions, how old is Delaney? Nine. He's nine years old. He had like four people sitting around eating the macaroni and cheese with him, and he even cleaned up his uh, stuff. You know, put everything away, put things in the dishwasher. I think he's on his way to, uh, you know, being so, a pretty good cook. Mm -hmm. That's just one of the many things that <laughs> happens here. We have a lot of fun here, and it's such a joy to see. Here comes Barry. Hi, I'm Barry Floyd. Hi, Barry. Tell us what you do, Barry. Oh, do I do? <laughs> I do Who are you, Barry? I, I do everything. Uh, I met Monica about six months ago, and uh, she was looking for space in a historic building I own called the Loveland Feed and Grain. And the space she liked, it would take a lot of renovations. So showed her a few more spaces, and we ended up at the BU house. So Barry's the one that's helping us support us with the space. That's great, Barry. And uh, I have I have quite a few global connections. Um, Barry has like ten times as many local connections. So it's been an incredible um, combination and coming together to where um, you know 
if a kid spends two minutes with Barry and explains what he wants, Barry's got five people in the city that can, you know, be a mentor or at least be introduced to. So it's been pretty amazing. And it's been quite a trip the last six months. Uh, and uh, we must have made close to 100 connections now here within a half mile of where the house is located. And uh, it, it grows every day. And uh, the people that we meet are amazed by what the whole concept is and what we're doing. Barry, what do you know about the yes. schools and some of the issues? Like there are teachers on this call who are talking about some frustrations about well, the way traditional classrooms are set up and curriculum and and so forth. What do you know about the local well, schools the, and how that, that's working or not working? I'm, I'm getting to be a little bit of an expert on it. Uh, we, we have a meetings, oh, maybe an average of once a week with the school administration, our school administrator. And uh, the first 30 minutes or so of the meeting is spent with maybe uh, – one of the directors of this uh, certain department, uh, individual departments with the schools, I won't mention names, or with the school district here. And uh, the first, like I say, the first 30 minutes, so they're, they're talking about the pro like what kind of insurance we need or what we need to do about this, this or that. And then it always ends up, I have a, my youngest daughter just started high school uh, this year and she hates it and she may drop out. And then the next hour, we're talking about the, the kids or, uh, and how they might fit in the program. And it just blows my mind when you're talking to us about a school administrator or to a school administrator, and all of a sudden, it switches to uh, Monica's program or to the, uh, to the lab. What so happens? You, you know there's people problems talk about, with the current. People talk about kids having difficulties in traditional schools. Is that what happens? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a rather, I mean, it's not a big city school district, but it's a school district of significant size. So how many, how many kids yeah. could the house there handle? Oh, as far as within the house, maybe up to 20 or 25. And I can say it's outgrowing the house. I don't know if we'll have to add on to it or, uh, I'm, I'm kind of switching horses, but uh, it's it's got my interest up, and I think uh, I think it's going to really develop uh, the New York trip that Monica just made. I think was very successful, but with uh, the connections both nationally and internationally and locally here within the Larimer County area in northern Colorado, it, it's just amazing uh, how it's catching on. Thank you. Is Monica still there? Yep, yeah, I am. She's, she's Christian's here. here too. Do you want to say hey to Christian? Sure. Was he one of the people who traveled with you? We're just in my city. Hey. Hi. Welcome. I was just in your what? In my city. New York City. Oh, you were, why didn't we go visit I know, because we didn't I, have enough time. Oh. You wow. were invited, Christian, yeah. I gotta say, but that's okay. <laughs> It's fine. Monica's fault. We yeah, did we did talk we'll about it and how it would be so cool, but we we drove yeah, for four okay. days and we're only there two, so Yeah, that's wild. Anyway, tell us tell us who you met and what you did there, Christian. Who we met. We met a bunch of different people. Uh I don't, I don't remember the names, but there was a bunch of people. One of the few that I remember was like this pickup app and they just made an app where you just Say you want to start a pickup game at a certain park, and they just you like send it in the app and people who you want to send it to, and they start coming. It was a really cool app. Yeah, about doing some of that. Cool. They got to play some pickup mm -hmm. soccer too. Yeah. We were in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Yeah, but what are you guys talking about? <laughs> let's start. Let's start. Let's answer some of your questions. Getting off track. Well. Well, some kids resist that. Why don't you talk about? Why don't you tell us about what kind of reader you are? What kind of reading do you oh. do? Go for it, Christian. I hate reading. 
<laughs> I, I don't I dislike reading uh, every time like Monica gets an email about concerning me I'll have her read it to me uh, I don't know it's not that I'm a bad reader or anything it's just like I'd rather watch a video about it and there's, there's different ways to do it besides looking at a bunch of letters for me so I don't know it doesn't intrigue me but for others, I'd say it's not the same for everybody. So it it all depends on people. But for me, I don't. I don't. Oh, um, yeah, but I don't know. It's not an excuse at all. Yeah. It's just, and you know what? I don't know about you guys, but our district this year is like totally focusing on high school guys and and getting them to read. You know, well. The things that we have them read in high school are really not things that they're particularly interested in. Another guy in the lab last year was very interested in roller coasters. And he, you know, he was actually in the lab. Last year we had kids come in the lab for a specific curriculum. They could come in for English. So he came in for English. And um, at, at the beginning of the year, it looked like he was just watching roller coaster stuff. But come to find out, he was reading tons of literature on roller coasters online. Ended up, he's now writing like newsletters to all the people in this park. That yeah, but yeah. actually, yeah. this will be over in about ten minutes. <laughs> Gail, did you want to ask Christian something? I thought you did. Yeah, I'm just curious, Christian. So, have you ever um, had a book that you could not put down? Yeah, actually, yeah, I was about to say something like that. Okay, yeah, I guess what I don't like is reading stuff that doesn't, like, I won't read something if it doesn't attract me or some. That's a big deal. But I have read a bunch of, like, soccer books, and I don't even know why, but they, I finished them really quick, and I, I just now started thinking about that. that I actually, I've read a few books, but they were about soccer, and they seem like they got done in a few a few hours but and i also i also read a lot cuz i all go on youtube and i'll go on a bunch of different stuff and actually now that i think of it i do read a lot wait wait so how yeah, do you read so like, on youtube read. describe your reading well, on youtube I'll, well, I, every video I watch, I'll probably like scroll down to all their comments, and because the comments is like all the feedback and then a bunch of different stuff. That's that's kind of weird. I guess I just don't like reading books that don't interest me. Or, is know. there a particular kind of blog you like to read? Why are there some that you read regularly? Yeah, there's uh, so there's this website called Globekick.com, and it has a bunch of like people and their profiles and it shows people who want to do something in their lives with soccer so I'll go on there a, a bunch of times a day and I'll check out what they're doing it's cool to figure out and find out about what people are doing in the soccer community you know and Facebook you know be reading statuses all day <laughs> gotta, gotta find out what your friends are doing <laughs> okay, so the next time somebody asks you if you are a reader, the answer is yes. Yeah, wow. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. I don't, but I don't I'm realizing, <laughs> and, and Cynthia, I wonder, I'm realizing that I have not done a reading survey with my students. I haven't, I haven't had the questions that I just asked Christian, I haven't asked my students those kinds of questions. And I'm wondering if you have with your kids too, Cynthia? If I can, I, I wanna join you in the issue. I mean, I have this thing. To do that more. And so, yeah, it's a great idea. Hmm. So where are we? We're uh, up uh, to the top of the hour here. Chris Sloan, can you come back a little bit? Because you teach AP English, right? And I don't want to give up. Yeah. I, I, you're in a different situation, I guess. 
Um, but how do you handle? I guess, the but yeah, go ahead. Well, I mean, um, anybody who can take the anybody who wants to take the class can take the class. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a pretty wide range of students. Uh, but how do I handle like whole class reading? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, actually, they they read. Uh, they have free choice stuff, and then sometimes we have common books. So right now, 1984 is a common book, but um, they do have a lot of latitude when they choose their reading. I just think you know you start every day with some form of reading or writing, and and Christian's right. You know that um, the reading isn't always in books. Um, you know they have a lot of latitude. So like I said, the the student who really was into, um, I forget the name of the guy who did The Watchmen, but I keep coming back to that one because, you know, every chance he could, he, re he read these really fascinating um, graphic novels. And, um, you know, some kids read poetry or other kinds of genres or, or levels or whatever, so it's that's wide open. But then sometimes we come together and we read a book as a whole group because you know we talk about problems we have reading or um, what's the what the reading makes us think about and not so much I mean I don't give them quizzes on what was the reading about we spend most of the time talking about what the reading makes us think about whatever kind of reading we're doing that's a, that's a, that's a good I like that it's what a lot more interesting that's for yeah, sure yeah that's great <laughs> Uh, I, I lost patience a long time ago for um, asking people to summarize the reading so that they could prove that they read it. That that doesn't interest me anymore. So. So, Kristen, can you imagine reading a book with a group of people? Why would you yeah. do that? I I I I could I could see that. If they told you what you had to read. But not if. It was something that it was really boring. If somebody else was reading it and I wasn't reading at all, like I, if I wasn't reading at all, and if we were having a discussion like the way he's saying about problems where we have reading, that'd be mm -hmm. cool if we could discuss stuff like that. And if it was and not just me reading a really boring book. Coming together. I don't want to give up coming together and reading things together because I valued that in my life. I just want to yeah, kind of like, ask you guys, can you imagine a reason for reading a book, you know, as a small group <coughs> or, or a larger group together? And wh what purpose would that serve for you? It's an honest question. I don't know. Me? You don't have to have an answer right now, but yeah. Is that for me? Is, yeah. Is that open to everybody, Paul? Sure. But, but Christian. Oh wait. Okay. Okay. So, why it'd be important to like read in a group? Is that? Yeah. Right. Well, You'll all be reading the same book. Okay. Well, there's uh, that's a big problem I had in school. Like when they would and the yeah no, um, but if if it's something with like. Every time that I had a chance when I was in class in, in high school, in regular school, every time I had a chance, I'd always be like, let's do popcorn reading or let's do something like that. Because not only would it be fun to like get to choose your friend and make fun of him when he read a little funny, <laughs> but like it was cool because you guys all interacted on the book and it was a cool feeling, you know, because you guys, you heard him, you read a little, yeah. So we're thinking about, um, like I said, no real answers here, but interesting problems. Um, why don't we go around and get final comments? We start with you. You're right at the top of my screen here. Um, what are okay. your thoughts here as we're closing? Or what, well, what I mean, I couldn't next? help but um, catch that a lot of the undercurrent with a lot of people is just um, students' dissatisfaction, like uh, Monica talks a lot about students dissatisfaction with traditional schools and you know it's just not working for people and you know some of the things that Gail mentioned and Fred were talking about just how stifling schools are is just terrible so um, but then I think there's this 
we've got to do something about it because there's millions of kids who are in schools that uh, need to be shown legitimate and valuable things while we've got them in these spaces, even if the spaces are a little constraining or, uh, you know, not deadening, but, you know. Yeah, so it's it's finding that space, kind of adapting some of what Monica does with her uh, in the house there, maybe trying to think about, you know, how schools can somehow become those places that are interesting, like Christian talks about, those those places where, um, you know, if I'm interested in it, if it connects to me, then, um, or if it connects to the students, then, you know, that's what we've got to find, all of us, no matter whether we're in non-traditional or unschools or regular schools. And that's what we deal with on a daily basis, and it's never easy. Cool. I, I, I totally agree, and I think, you know, anywhere we are, we have control of our mind. And I think that a lot of us don't believe that. And so like what you said that you ask kids after they read a book, not so much what was it about, but what, what did it make you feel? There's no right answer. There's no wrong answer to that. And I think in any kind of confinement that you have, because we all have varying degrees of confinement, you can say, I own my mind and um, I'm going to notice things, you know, so, I, you know, I think if we go towards the mindset and and um, focus on that and let kids know that they have the freedom for for what they are feeling or thinking about something, that that's my feel for right now. While we are still in the classroom, you can say um, you do have that freedom. So, cool, Cynthia, you started us off. Any thoughts? Yeah, well, well and, and I, I had a, for, a, a thought when you brought up. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Fred. Go ahead. And we'll get to Cynthia next. Oh, I was I was just when you mentioned uh, that you were reading Black Boy, uh, Paul, it reminded me uh, that uh, Richard Wright was a member of the Communist Party. And I've been thinking a lot lately about talking about, I have a, a, a digital story I'm in the middle of about growing up as a red diaper baby and the whole Occupy movement is making me feel like it's really time to reclaim the two-thirds of the American political spectrum that's been ampu there's just no way to make the kinds of changes that have to be made. So communism and, and and identifying oneself as a communist or socialist is really still a a complete taboo that that just you know we have one nationally known politician who says he's a socialist and uh, that's it you know so we really need to reclaim a much broader discourse and that communist party in Chicago too though as well. Oh, yeah. Any, any institution. Yeah. So did all of us. <laughs> I just thought I'd mention, you know, the Occupy people certainly give a lot of hope um, to expanding some of the discourse, I think, you know, looking for that to happen. Cynthia, you got us started here with your concerns that all of us felt, too. What are you thinking now? Well, I was just uh, kind of laughing that my um, room went dark behind me because I'm definitely still feeling like I'm, uh, you know, in the dark about a lot of things. Um, you know, and it's just been very interesting to hear everyone's ideas. I can't wait until I can get my students onto Youth Voices so that they can be a part of a larger conversation. And I mean, that's why I do. I mean, like Monica was saying, it's a publicly prescribed curriculum situation that I find myself in. But um, I also, I, I enjoy having discussions around books. And that was my goal with the students was to say, hey, here's a book that I think would be fabulous for you guys because there's so many relevant issues. And if we all read it together, we're all discussing it. You know, I think it's going to be a great quantum leap to be able to see, you know, Chris's students discussing it on Youth Voices. And you know, hopefully, hearing other responses to 
what Chris's students are saying about 1984. So I guess I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to, I know that the kids are resisting it for a lot of good reasons, but there's part of me that says, you know, if you just give it a try, you actually might like some aspects of this. So I don't know, it's, it's a huge challenge and I'm very much in the dark. Thanks for your frankness tonight. Appreciate it. I I want to make my last comment another quick story that there's a young woman who's been trying to figure out her inquiry topic. And it started with looking at birthmarks. And then she looked at how left-handed people are um, like not treated fairly. And she felt like she didn't have a focus. I felt like she didn't have a focus and she's been really kind of struggling with it. She has settled now on prejudice and kind of trying to look at what is prejudice. Um, and then within writing about that today, um, I reminded her of some of Richard Wright's experiences with white cops at the beginning of, of Black Boy. And so she was making the connection back to the literature that way. So getting back around to one of Chris's points about dystopias and utopias, I think if we couch literature inside of themes like that, and if they can be individual themes, that would be a really wonderful way to, to run with some of this. So that's some of what I'm thinking. I'm also thinking, and thank you, Christian, how how little I know about my students reading experience. I know the kind of funny jokes about, you know, the girl who said, I can't remember the last time I read a book. And the boy who said, I put this in my backpack and I thought that was a good thing. He said, no, anything that goes in there never comes out again. Um, but I, but the more serious stories about their reading, I want to kind of capture somehow. Gail, last thoughts? I'm still thinking on um, some of the last things people have commented on. <laughs> so, right. But um, and and really, um, you know, reminding myself, I need to get teachers coming into Youth Voices, and I need to be in there too. Um, cool. Has been a crazy couple of weeks. Right. And Valerie Barton's kids are jumping in, so that's really exciting. Fred, any last thoughts, or or did you have that already? <laughs> oh, go go ahead. I, I think it's Monica's turn. Okay, Monica, you get the last thought too. Oh gosh. You don't have to. Um I think would... what I would I don't want to add more reading. So we all love reading so much. I'm reading Kathy Davidson's um Now You See It. Mm -hmm. And I've heard I'm about halfway through and um it's talking about how things are changing so much now and um we're still focusing on, well, the white t-shirt video where they're passing the balls between the white t-shirts and the gorilla comes through and you miss the gorilla because you're focused on the white t-shirts. Um, and that would be representative of the standards. And she's saying that it's such a different time now and kids learn so differently that the gorilla is really even. When I heard her be interviewed about the book, her main goal for the book is for us to relax because yeah, that's that's where we want to go. But when we when you look at how things have changed, we're really doing quite well um, for all the oppression or or whatever you say is going on. We're, we're really doing quite well with um, not have completely folding. Um, we still have kids that are, are are rising to occasions. We still we were at Occupy Wall. Street the most anti-war and wants to do good. And um, so a, a huge um, suggestion and uh, along the lines of what she writes about is to relax and that it, the, the, re the quiet revolution is coming and um, just to keep on, I guess, because we're, you know, sometimes we talk ourselves into a dither. Um, so I guess that's how I'll end. Cool. Thank you. And I think you gave us some reason for us to read together so we can <laughs> um, and we'll capture that chat and put it up with this um, at edtechtalk.com.
uh, which is a channel of the World Bridges Network, and it'll also be at Teachers Teaching Teachers. Thank you all tonight, and we'll see you all next week. Thank you. Good night, all. Thanks, Paul. What, hey, Christian? You can still talk. Yes. Christian, did you have something oh, to add? Oh, oh, Christian. We're... I was just wondering about one of the comments. I was talking. Sorry. So, um, it's okay. he, he was noticing, let me see. Somebody was saying they wanted to know more about what the kids are doing. And uh, so, and this ties into what you just said too, Paul, on labconnections.blogspot.com. Um, we do have a link now to these videos, these TED Great. Um, Teachers Teaching Teachers. Um, but it also has the latest of what we're doing. Um, it has, you know, what is detox, what is all the stuff we're doing. And we, we did take a book to New York. It's still in rough draft form, but it is in a slide share. Um, so you can see five elements that we, we believe are really important. Thank you, Freddie. Good night. Good night.